Larry, no trip to the northwest is really complete without a little rain, and we're going to get plenty of it here at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football. So are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with the San Francisco 49ers. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And his first look is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse. And now it's second down. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. again Wilson and this is caught it's Jimmy Graham and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line a Seahawk first down Wilson to his big target Graham Jimmy Graham had a really tough injury in 2015 that ended his season but what a bounce back in 2016 how do you not get any votes for comeback player of the year I was just going to ask you that not that Jordy Nelson wasn't deserving but 65 catches 923 yards that was the highest total by a tight end in Seahawk history and I think there's a chance that both of those numbers will increase in 2017 and he'll take this one up close to about the 45 two yards on the pick up there it'll be second and eight And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the shotgun, Wilson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away. Jeremy Curley is deep to return for the 49ers. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. Hyde. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Hey, up, here we go. Green, 39. On second down, Hyde. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position, the guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front is eating up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. All right, here we go. Three, Hoyer. And that is incomplete. 
And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. In his third year on is the punter Bradley Pinion to kick it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Now Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The crowd losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And now running right through it. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. Now Wilson on second down, going to Rawls on the dump off. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> and we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This will be taken about the 12. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. They start on the ground with Rawls. <laughs> And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. And a solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. See if they stay on the ground for second down. To throw is Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And he is leveled. Knocked down hard. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. And they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space. Let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. 
And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. First down, Seahawks, Wilson to Baldwin. At some point, the doubters have to just kind of back off with Doug Baldwin, don't they? I mean, we're talking about back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, had over 90 catches in 2016. He's going to play with a chip on his shoulder, but he's going to be productive. 2016, also his first Pro Bowl as well. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. Wasn't able to get anything. No gain. Fumbled once already. Maybe he's being a little careful. Not necessarily on that play, but I'm sure that's in his mind somewhere. Oh, without a doubt, because protecting the football is job one for anyone who's carrying it. And that's exactly what he tried to do on that play. But it didn't gain him any yardage. They go again with Rawls. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Now, that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him, giving him the ball again, and he repaid on picking up a first down. Wilson again to Rawls. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. The first carry now. This is Lacey. They'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Now Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola, and then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. They come up in an offset eye. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. On second down, here's Wilson. And he can't corral it. Maybe a big missed opportunity there defensively in the end zone. And now third down. 
All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. On third and goal, Wilson. And that will be incomplete as well. How about the defensive stand here from first and goal, three straight incompletion. Yeah, I think people are wondering why didn't they try and run it at least once in there. But once the first incompletion happened, it's almost like they were committed to throwing the ball from then on out. So on fourth down, Pete Carroll is going to call out his field goal unit. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they wanted to. Now after the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run, so now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. Here's Hoyer, throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Carlos Hyde was the target, and that'll make it third down. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Now Hoyer. Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. K.J. Wright coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. And there they bring pressure from the inside, and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. First down with Wilson, and it's caught over the middle. Wilson, the completion good for three, and it's second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. And the Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Let's go, let's go. Two for three. 
They run with a power back. Rawls. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The tight end, Luke Wilson, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. Two seconds to go, first quarter. Tenth carry for Thomas Rawls. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They're facing a tough spot, third and eight here to start things out. They go play action with Wilson. Let's this one rip toward Graham. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. Uh, despite a little sizzle on the move, he's still tackled shy of the 20. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. K.J. Wright just keeps getting better at outside linebacker. Long, lengthy guy, can rush the passer, can drop into coverage. Has great agility, though, to stay on his feet and make tackles, too. And still has years ahead of him. Turned 27 in July, native of Olive Branch, Mississippi. There we go now. Green, 39. <laughs> Again, it's high. Had the nifty footwork, but only able to get it to his own 20. Now we have Hyde still on the ground here. Staying down after that last play. We'll check on his status when we get back. Third down now following the run. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Back to throw here. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Bradley Pinion now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And he uncorks a beauty, best of the day. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game. 
All right, in baseball, I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. 31 yards there and a first down. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game. And a loose football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. Now a man who sat out three seasons. This is Tim Hightower. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Now back to throw. This is going to be incomplete. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance, and to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Over the middle, and it's incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin. That'll bring up second down. So second and 10 here. Wilson going to give to Rawls. And a short pick up here as he'll get up to about the 22-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. The Seahawks on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. He'll dump it off to Procise. 
And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. And you give him that much time to throw, especially on third down, he's going to pick you apart. You've got to increase your urgency. Even if you don't blitz or bring extra people on the pass rush, the guys going after it, they've got to get home. Otherwise, exactly as you described, he picks you apart and picks up yet another first down. Now it's Wilson looking for his running back, and he's got him. It'll be a gain of four, and that'll make it second down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mouse trap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. It's a loss of two. Now third down. With Navarro Bowman, we might as well just call him the comeback kid. I mean, battling injuries, coming back, and continuing to play at a high level. Through those injuries, three-time pro bowler, and a bright future still ahead of him, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. And he's the guy that they're going to turn to to really set up this defense and have them start to play well, play at that NFL-style level. Wilson. And the Niners get there and bring him down. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. fake here on first down and his throw here's incomplete Pierre Garçon the intended receiver and that'll bring up second down and on second and ten now for about six up across the 20 to the 22. The Niners on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and four. Back to throw. And able to find Curley. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. But well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. First down, a run with high. The broken tackle, but couldn't create much space. Down just beyond the 35. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Play fake to hide. Now it's Hoyer. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The 
The Niners on third down. Just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. Looking to throw. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. Here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been terrific so far. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. In my humble estimation, terrific work there defensively. Running backs trying to get wide, get to the sideline, and they beat him to the spot, forced him out of bounds, pretty close to the line of scrimmage. Second down, Rawls. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. And still needing 10 yards. Second down. The busy afternoon continues for Rawls. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage. And we're still in the second quarter. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. A dump off to Lacey. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Call it a three-yard gain, and it's a second down. Now it's second and seven. From midfield now, here's Wilson. It's caught, lock it. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. Wilson to lock it there for the Seahawk first down. down Wilson and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Earl Mitchell able to swap him from that defensive tackle spot for a loss of five throwing is Wilson and he hits Jermaine Curse 
The reception good for seven. It's third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Here's John Ryan now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Out on the field now. Here come the 49ers. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Boyer. On the left side, it's McDonald. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Got his target, Pierre Garçon. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Hoyer finding Garçon there for the 49er first down. When you're rebuilding, we know you got to hit it big in the draft, but you also want to acquire free agents. They're going to really set the tone for your team. Pierre Garçon had some history with head coach Kyle Shanahan previously. I think that's why they picked him up. He's got great history in this league, of course, starting with the Colts, then the Redskins, now the Niners. So here we go, first and ten now. Right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. They'll set up a throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Green, 39. Green, 39. He'll look to throw. Over the middle to Garcon. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Here's Hoyer. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's McDonald. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion.
The Niners on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This time they face a third and two. They'll look to throw here. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. K.J. Wright in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. for the field goal try, Robbie Gould. His career long, 58. This to equal Matt Prater's record. It's a 64-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting 49ers on top. As we send you across the country to Orlando, standing by there, Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. All right, here we go. Green, they'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Ten yards still left on second down. Green, 39. Green, 39. They run high. He spins free. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But, boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. The Niners on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and four. Here we go now. Green, They'll look to throw. Two new 49ers, Hoyer to Garcon for the first. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. him off and he's going to take this one up only to about the 44 yard line just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine in my book that's running the ball well but with intelligence how about him keeping the clock moving staying in bounds yeah even though it's the third quarter you're thinking ahead aren't you this is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half i agree totally it's not just end of the half situations that you worry about the clock it's throughout the game, and with the lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I think we saw some of the best qualities of Carlos Hyde on that run, able to pick up something there, being physical running the football. But I think he's got really good vision and great feet. He's going to be the key to this offense really being revitalized. They'll look to throw now on first down. There's the first catch as a 49er for Marquise Goodwin. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Fresh set of downs here. with Hightower. And he stopped immediately there. 
Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a run with high. And power running here down to the six-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there as they'll be left with third and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. He's at the 50, the 40, the 20, 10. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. So a big turn of events there. This defense makes the play. They return it for the score, and now they have the lead. So much for ball security for the offense. Playing with a lead in the second half. They give the ball up, and all of a sudden they're behind. Big time fumble. Blair Walsh on to attempt the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Throwing here on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Jeremy Curley, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Now whistles here, and I think one of the big boys for the 49ers might have jumped. set up to throw out to the flat that's complete to his running back and he will lose yardage on the play back at his own 19 yard line it'll be a loss of one and they're going to be staring at a third and long here well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it will help them at contract time. And he checks this one down to Williams. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cliff Averill. 
in there to sack him for a loss of six. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Right. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. The Niners on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for ten. This will be third and 15. Hoyer off the play fake for Williams. Goodwin able to haul it in. A gain of 19 in picking up the first. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. And they're moving on crossing routes. If you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. They run it again with Hyde. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength, and he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to punt the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Following the penalty, it's Rawls. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. A nice, strong run there for Rawls. His coaches back in high school in Flint, Michigan, you know what his nickname was? No, what was it? The train. The man can break some tackles on occasion. Well, it makes sense when you watch runs like that because when you're trying to deal with a train, you're supposed to get out of the way, right? <laughs> and if you don't, you're going to get bruised up trying to tackle him. That's the type of runner he is. He can pop people as he goes by. And down he goes. 
Rivers, but he takes it up to the 40. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. But they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Now a first down carry, it's Lacey. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Second down following the run. Again, it's Lacey. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll lead here to a third down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. And the Seahawks on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, Wilson. And Wilson has it. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. Now Wilson on first down. The grab made by Curse over the middle. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. That throw good for four. It's second down. Final minute now of the third quarter. to the ground attack. It's Rawls. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Yeah, the Seahawks on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This will be third and six. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. On third down, Wilson. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Earl Mitchell able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Yeah, the 49ers getting set to trot out there. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll try and start this drive in the air. His throw incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. He'll find Goodwin here on the right side. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Hoyer to Goodwin, and the Niners have a first down. Uh, 
to the offense lining up first and ten. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Draw play as Hoyer gives to Hyde. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. this off to Williams complete and he's going to have the first down at about the 38 it's a 10 yard pickup and it moves the chains and on the outside they're playing press coverage First down, he'll drop to throw it. He gets this one to Bruce Ellington. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. That goes for a gain of 31. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. And now a first down following that long gain. Looking to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So second and ten here. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Now whistles here, and I think one of the big boys for the 49ers might have jumped. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Here's Hoyer. And an alley to run. Oh no, he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. There he goes left side. Pass the 20. 10. And they bring this one back. It's a fumble recovery and a Seattle touchdown. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room where they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Walsh now for the PAT. It's good to make it 17-7.
And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Set to return. Here's Raheem Mostert. And some space here. And he will take this one all the way back inside the 35-yard line. There's no downplaying that we all knew that this was a critical possession. And to get a return like that to start things off, that's the spark that they needed. That's the spark they were looking for. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Now Hoyer. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. Now whistles here, and I think one of the big boys for the 49ers might have jumped. and it'll be third down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And able to find Garcon. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll look to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. They go screen pass to Hyde. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. The first carry for the Utah man now, it's Joe Williams. And yet again, nowhere to run. This time, maybe we'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. One of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? It's like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And they're back with it a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stout defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. And 
this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. On first down, Wilson. And the Niners get there and bring him down. The rookie from Stanford, Solomon Thomas. And it'll be a second and long. So with the addition of Solomon Thomas, think about what the 49ers have done now in their last three drafts. Eric Armstead, defensive tackle slash end. DeForest Buckner, the same thing, out of the University of Oregon as well. And now Solomon Thomas stayed in the Pac-12 and got three big-time players. And Thomas, Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year a season ago at Stanford. Here's Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And the Seahawks on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and eight. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Now, a loose football. The ball comes out. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. It, what's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. On is the punter, Ryan, to send this one away. This will be a 41-yard punt, three on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And after the field goal last, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And last time, able to get three what they wanted they wanted six but they got at least something they mustered something out of the drive they'll take it just I, I like the way you've described it not ideal but they'll take it anything to put some points on the board but this time on offense they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone yeah, they'll be going for six this one complete right side to mcdonald and he gets this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 Hoyer to McDonald for a 49er first. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll look to throw now on first down. Fighting through pressure. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Got the hand caught up in the grill of the face mask. 15-yard penalty. So tough for a defender. You're trying so hard to make a play, and the way that these offensive guys can move around, sometimes your hand gets into the wrong place. to throw here on first down. This is caught by Robinson. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take it down to the 40. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. 
On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And, oh, the ball's out. Hyde fumbled it. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And it looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Incomplete. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin. And now it's second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. It's high, and they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Back to throw. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. He's back to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And a short return will be stopped inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. They stay on the ground. Rawls again. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. down as they bring him down at the 23. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. This is Rawls. 
And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. One final kneel down here as it comes inside the 42nd mark, and that should be enough to put this one on ice. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay. Why? I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth. That rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we...